I'm not on, am I? Yes, you are. No, I'm not. <laughs> he says, I'm on. Tell me, what has God done personal for you? Anything? Uh huh. He took a, a, a terrible situation and smoothed it out. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else? I just got a job. You just got a job. Yeah. Hey! 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 Spirit of prosperity on you. Uh huh. I want a, a settlement and my check was in the mail this week. Oh, oh praise God. God! Praise God! Prosperity, overflow. Anybody else? Uh huh. Unexpected finances. Praise God! Yeah, I've heard it from this one and this one. Y'all better come here and touch me. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. We know God's moving. Anyone else? Anyone else? We're called to worship him. Mark, uh -huh. go ahead. I got a praise report that my scan, my uh, markers in my blood came back um, negative, so there's no more signs of cancer. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So, so does that mean that our God is healing? He's still in the healing business. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Does this, with the testimonies that have gone on so far, does this mean that God still prospers his people? Yes. Not with just a little bit, but more than enough? More than enough. Amen? Yes. Any other praise reports this morning? Uh-huh. Oh, over time, I have been suffering with COVID, and then I now and then I got negative tests. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, Brother Jack, of course, keeps you know, mm -hmm. up with the testing. So each time I've tested after I've been in isolation, blah, 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 mm -hmm. it's come back negative. So. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Because there is war going on with that. Amen. Many of them tested negative. It keeps reoccurring. Exactly. That's a spirit. That's a spirit. God wants his people. Does God want his people healed? Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So we begin to, we speak that over our bodies, don't we? Yes, yes. I yes. speak it over my mind, my body, my soul. Be whole in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. you know, we're Lord. on camera this morning, and, and we just want to welcome you here. We're a Godly Community Fellowship here in Ontario, California, and we're just the people that's come to praise God. Amen. Just to glorify Him for who He is. I don't come with any form or any fashion. These people will tell you, I can just be myself. Amen. I will have moments that I will just sit down here and just say what God said. And just talk, give real talk. Because I'll tell you this morning, God loves you. Amen. You know, sometimes people don't tell us enough how they care about us. They'll tell other people or they'll criticize us. But, but I'm going to tell you this morning, God loves you. Amen. And he, our God loves us unconditionally. Thank you, Lord. Thank I don't care what other people you. say about you. You can get into trouble with your mama. She may not speak to you for a few days. You can get in trouble with your daddy. He may not speak to you for a few days. You can get in trouble with your spouse, and they'll talk about, not supposed to use the D word, but they sure are thinking it. And if they're not thinking the D word, they're thinking murder. <laughs> you know, you, you just don't know what comes up in the spirit realm, right? But the enemy brings to try to tear you down. Amen? Amen. But God, our God, keeps us and he yes. secures us doesn't he yes. thank yes. you lord yes. so every day we thank him for what the mind of christ yes. amen yes. thank you lord. let's stand together and let's pray together amen. thank you lord thank you lord let's just praise him for being god amen. thank you lord we love you
in, in, uh, in this church this morning, Father God. Oh, God. Lord, your glory shine. Your glory. Not just shine, but your glory be. Oh, God. Your glory will just fill the place. Yes. Fill the place. And as you fill the place, God, it'll fill our hearts, God. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the drawing and for the wooing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that causes us to come closer to you, Lord, and to want more of you, God. Thank you, Lord, for assigning the Holy Spirit to live inside of us, Lord. Thank you for the ministering spirits, God, all around us, angels, God, that are, that are assigned to us, Lord, to strengthen us. Father, we thank you this morning that there is more with us than against us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You never leave us. You never forsake us, God. And you are so faithful. Father, we pray this morning that even as the word goes forth, Lord, from Apostle Ken today, God, that it will find good soil in our hearts, God. Oh, God, and that your word will remain, God, in Jesus' name. And that the word will be so anointed, God, that we will go out and touch other lives, Lord. Oh, God, we will repeat the word over and over again. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Praise you, Jesus. He is so worthy, isn't he? Thank you, Lord. God we serve. You know, some of you guys have just come in, and we were sharing uh, what God has done in our lives this week. Do you have a praise report at all? Any praise report? No praise report? Thank you. My praise report, I'm still alive. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. When I saw the accident, many of us saw it over and over again on TV in Windsor Hills, that's here in California, and where that that uh, person uh, was just out of control and hit those other cars, when the seven cars it hit, and um, these people went into eternity in a twinkling of an eye. They don't know what hit them. It was that destructive. A uh, mother passed, a mother on her way to the hospital, uh, to she was on her way to the clinic, uh, to to uh, doing prenatal care because she had a new another baby coming. A, a infant died. All of this happened. Can I tell you that things can happen in a twinkling of an eye? Yeah. And this is a time for us to be what prayed up in God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Don't let your praise go down. Praise Amen. God. Yes. Because if you're going to go out, go out shouting. Yes. Go out praising. Hallelujah. Amen. Because this ain't home. Thank you, Lord. So we, as we pray for those families today and all of that and the loved ones involved in that, but let this be a lesson to us. Let this be a lesson to us. We don't know what our last time is, do we? No. Thank you, Lord. But as the apostle told us, everybody has an expiration date. Amen? Amen. Are you ready? Amen. If God were to come in the next 20 seconds, are you ready? Will you be able to go out praising God? Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? Do you have bitterness or unforgiveness? No. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. It's not going to get in. It's not going to get in. Amen. That's Amen. right. Because he said if we don't forgive, he won't forgive. Amen? Amen. Isn't that what he, said? what he said? So this morning, we just forgive everybody. Amen. Amen. I don't care what Amen. they say or what they do. know my phrase it wasn't about nothing, nothing. <laughs> because it came from the enemy to tear us down amen thank you lord but we know this morning what we are more than conquerors and we are strong in the mighty of the 
in the power of God. We are mighty in him, aren't we? Yes. Yes. Praise God, yes, Apostle. Hallelujah. Apostle is in the house. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. saying something that's not you if you're speaking something that's personal Amen. say I'm going to get mine Amen. glory to God Pastor God I'm going to get mine so, Amen. you know Brother Tony I was looking at that I said no no I don't want to say something that's not of God Amen. but then I heard the Father saying again and I kept hearing scriptures scripture references and I said you know the last thing you want to do is tell somebody that they're blessed or anticipate the blessing. Because, you know, if you listen to me, um, I usually don't tell you, you know, people like to tell you, uh, pray, you know, praying for blessing. Anybody praying for blessing? Well, the, the Word of God, if you understand, if we go back to its origin, you'll find that one of the things that God did from the very beginning, He spoke to us and He told us to be blessed. He speaks that to us that we would understand that he's already given us the blessings. And so uh, when we keep, how do you ask for something that you already got? Amen. Amen. All right. So he says, I've already given you all spiritual. Oh, I must be wrong now. Anyway, and so understanding, when you understand it, one of the things I like to tell people is stay blessed. Amen. Amen. See, because when you say stay, it's like to be or remain in. Amen. And so that's what you want to do is you remain in. But I heard the Father saying that in this season, what he is bringing forth, what he's bringing forth is the sense where he is blessing the people. And the reason why I hesitate is because I looked at some things and I said, now, wait a minute. You see all the things that are happening? Amen. Amen. They they even said name name some stuff after a monkey. I don't know. I don't know what a monkey pop up. But. You know. I told somebody say, look out for the monkey paw. They said, you mess they told me you mess everything up. I said, Well, glory to God. I'm not looking for it, so you know, just watch out for the monkey paw. So you know, it's so much stuff that's going on. Yes. Now, on one hand, we can understand the Bible speaks about in the latter days how we were going to see all these things. We hear, you know, um, earthquakes and in dire places, how we hear of all these different things, wars and rumors of war, how we would see the sense of pestilence, all these things that we're seeing in this time. And so um, it's not like something that's, that's said that hasn't been said. You follow what I'm saying? But then you got people... You know, um, I don't know, man. It just, forgive my, my language, man. It just, uh, it, it just, it just gets to me because I remember hearing the story of Henny Penny. Y'all remember that? Henny? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, anybody remember Henny Penny? Yeah. And, and he was talking, you know, the sky is falling. Man, I, I'm, I'm kind of like this with some of the stuff that everybody be talking about. You know, they run around, Pastor Dalton, they, they, with their masks and, you know, don't get me wrong, I understand some things, but it's, it's like the sky is falling. Like, you're looking out for everything. Watch out for that. Watch out for this. I'm like, glory to God. And then the bad thing about it is that it's Christians. I, I went, um, had to go to one church, 
And it's called a head seating. If you don't get, that's the way that, you know, you know, I know making reservations at Red Lobsters, but I know how to make a reservation at the church. I said, glory to God. Only certain people, only once they get a certain amount, you can't come in. See, because God only going to bless them. And the rest of you even get overflow and you go home. I, I, I understand, but we, we kind of like, we're running from everything. I'm like, man, God, where, where is the God we serve? Where is this God of all power? Where is this God of all might? It just kind of, anyway. My dilemma is not yours. <laughs> so uh, if you have your Bibles, now, if you have a Bible, glory to God, if you, I don't care how you got your Bible, if it's on uh, radio, uh, <laughs> you know, if your Bible's in your notebook, <laughs> your backpack, I don't care how it is, just get your Bible, glory to God. You know, um, most people would now, Bible's on their phone. Hey, Amen. I want to have some fun, man. I want to have some fun. Uh, so I want to tell you. Now, if your Bible's on your phone, uh, please make sure that you are listening and looking at the Bible. I'm reminded some years ago, one of the young fellows was in the choir, and he had his little earpiece in. Pastor Wayne, he started going like this. <sighs> yeah! And, and I thought the Spirit of God had got him. Found out later, Dallas had scored a touchdown. <laughs> but, you know, so I need you to be focused with me on the word. Amen? Amen. And so I want to share, share some things with you. Uh, and so it, it is really in talking about the sense of what God is saying. He wants to bless us. But now when I talk about the blessing, it's like God said this is it's a time he's bringing some things in. Tell your neighbor, if it's not for you, just leave it alone. <laughs> Say, just, just leave it. You know, you, you, you know, tell some people like this, Brother Roland. Leave it. If you don't want the blessing, leave it in your seat. I'll pick it up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's all, it's all right. This, if this is not for you, just leave it in the seat. I will get yours. Amen? That all right with you? I will get yours. Um, so I need to just walk you through some places. And the reason why I want to walk you through... Is because I want you to see some things that God uh, is saying. He said, you ever heard the scripture where it says that God is the same yesterday, yes. today, yes. and forever? Yes. There are certain things you have to see in the word. And this is one of the places in Genesis chapter 26, beginning in verse 1. Now I'm going to keep jumping around and I want to make points. Amen? Amen. Somebody say he want to make points. Let's go help me. So if we say if we don't want to title anything. I want you to uh, tell somebody be prepared for the blessing. Be prepared for the blessing. In preparation for my blessing. Man, you know God has already blessed me, but I still need to be prepared for some things. God's getting okay. <sighs> In verse one. In verse 1, look very closely. And there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Now, now what you're going to be talking about, you're going to see a parallel between Abraham and Isaac. Abraham and Isaac. Isaac is the son of Abraham. And you're going to see this parallel that many of the things that... Uh, Abram did, or Abram or Abraham did, that Isaac does so much similar. And God is using this to bring forth the sense that we can see, as he was said, I'm going to bless Abraham. And remember, he, when he spoke to Abraham, he says, he told Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And in the course of blessing him, he told him, he says, listen, um, I'm going to bless you, your descendants. I'm going to bless you so that the stars in heaven, you can't number them like the people, are, in other words, your nation, your, your descendants that are going to be. And so um, the word that was going forth to Abraham, he told him in essence he was going to make his name great. Am I in the right house? Amen. 
He spoke these things to Abraham. And so what you're going to see, or what you begin to see is that Abraham and Isaac is this parallel, but in the sense that God is going to bless Isaac as he did Abraham, but it's also to show us the sense of what, what God did then as he blessed Abraham, he is now blessing Isaac. And it's also the sense that we can understand what God did back then, he's going to do now. Amen. So it's like for us it becomes a bridge that we can understand the presence and the power of God. So, see, see, you know, God speaks things that oftentimes that are overlooked by us. He sometimes brings it for us to see how I'm bridging things together. Remember uh, when he spoke to Joshua? He spoke to Joshua at the death of Moses, and he was telling him, he said, listen, he said, I want you to know, he says, Joshua, the way I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. He, in other words, he wanted to let him know the same way that I addressed him, the same way I worked with him, the same way I moved in his life, the same way I blessed him, I'm going to bless you. Amen. Yes, Lord. Tell somebody, you know, I want to know. You see, see, see if, 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 if you don't know God, all right, if your parents didn't know God, you don't have, you, you, you're already missing something because you said, well, I don't know the, the parallel. But I've seen some things already, and I look at this, and I said, you know, in this, God already spoke to me. He said, listen, you need to know it. Now, we used to laugh at our grandparents. My grandfather would be praying. He'd pray for everything. Woo! Prayed over everything. Prayed so much so that, it, you know, I'm just going to be real. Uh, Pastor, you know, uh, Apostle Darrell, I'd, I'd be upset when it come to eat. I'd say, oh, Lord. Oh, God. Because if granddad going to pray, he going to pray. He going to pray for how the food was made, who prepared it, when they got, and you know. And then they want everybody, you know, you got to have the But well, they want everybody to pray. Everybody got to pray? Do you see how many people? So I used to laugh at him sometimes. I didn't want him to see me laughing. And then he'd look at you sometimes like this, Pastor Wayne. And he'd say, Sonny boy. I didn't think you knew my name because he called me Sonny Boy. He said, Sonny Boy, you got a veil on you. No, man, there's no veil. He said, yeah, God done put his hand on you. God done called you. I ain't heard God say nothing. <laughs> I be laughing. He said, you know you called to preach. They grabbed that crazy. And so I thought Darren was telling everybody, you called to preach. Did he tell you that? I thought granddad was just telling everybody. I said, granddad just talked. But come to find out, some of the things granddad was saying, obviously God was speaking to him. I had an auntie, she, you know, we call her Aunt Bibi. And, and she used to irritate me. Because everybody come in, and I come in on my cool walk, you know. With my brothers, you know, my brothers was older brothers, they come in, and they tough. So I'm going to come in tough. And they maybe say like this. There he is. Yeah, my little preacher man. <laughs> she done messed up my swag. <laughs> I ain't no preacher. <laughs> and so before she passed away, I walked in and she said, I told you you gonna preach. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I understand is even to the point. What I was missing back then is some of them were praying for some of us. You're going to see this in the Word. Amen. Some of them were praying for some of us. Amen. That they, God was blessing them and He spoke a word in their lives Amen. that I'm going to do something in your life. And, and because of what you're doing for me, Amen. I'm going to use people in your life Amen. that's in your lineage Amen. to be blessed and be fruitful and to multiply Amen. because of obedience because of your obedience, I'm going to cause blessings to flow from you. <sighs> Tell somebody some things you didn't do. <sighs> you won't get to see this. And so this is why it's important that you can see in verse 1. He says, and there was a famine in the land. 
besides the first famine. Because there was a famine that had been in the land prior to, and he wants to let you know, wait a minute. I blessed Abraham in the midst of his famine. Now there's another famine that's come, and I want you to see the connection how I'm going to bless Isaac. The same way I took care of Abraham, I'm going to take care of Isaac. Tell somebody the same way he took care of them. And get ready to take care of you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so, this is the thing that's happened. So you see these parallels. And then and the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go down, not go go, go not down in Egypt. Now listen. Remember, God's taken, uh, if you go back, you're going to find Abraham went in Egypt. God's telling Isaac, don't go to Egypt. God's telling him where to go. Now listen to this. Tell somebody, we're going to have to hear the Lord. We need to hear God. Because you and I need to know where to go. Amen. 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 Sister Linda, we've been trying to do things. Without God, tell somebody I've been trying to do it my way. Jesus. Haven't worked too well. No, that does not work. Jesus. I'm telling you, there's some things God told me not to do, and I just go ahead and do it. You're not alone, Apostle. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. Tell you. This morning, I, I decided I wanted to get my car wash. Everybody ever do that? I just don't walk to go through, get the car wash real quick, and get back. And I heard the Holy Spirit said, "You probably don't want to do that." Well, you probably don't want. That's not a definitive type thing. <laughs> See, I want to get the car washed, and I, I was like, definitive. And then it's like I get in line. The Holy Spirit says, "You don't want to do this. You're already running behind." Well, I'm like, this only gonna take less than five minutes. You want to zippies? <laughs> I get in, and, and you know, you heard the Spirit of the Lord, but it wasn't definitive at that time, but then he made it definitive. <laughs> and I was still in a place I could have got out of line, but, but you know, I wanted that car clean. <laughs> so I got in the line and the arm broke. Well, no up for me. Uh -oh. I said, where the people? <laughs> now I'm going to back up and back out. Five people in line behind me. Uh -oh. So I'm stuck because I decided to do it my way. Right. <clears throat> I said, Father, listen, we don't. You ever tell the Lord we really don't need these lessons now? <laughs> <laughs> but he's just trying to tell me what I'm bringing my people to is you must hear and adhere to my voice because what I'm speaking, I want you to do what I said. So he speaks this word. He said, don't go to Egypt. Whew. Man, I'm sure he wasn't like me. We can see in the word he wasn't like me. Well, that wasn't a definite. Uh, maybe. So he went on. You know, he didn't go there. And so the Lord appeared unto him and said, go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which shall tell shall tell you, tell of you. You know, you ever have to wait on God. God, you gonna tell me where to go? Amen. And she, you know, can I just be real with you? Look at your neighbor and say, I'd like for God to just tell me right now. <laughs> I don't want no faith walk. Pastor, like now, now we understand that God said, I, He said, we are called to walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. That's, not, that's not like a word for you, Christian. We've been called to walk by faith and not by sight. Yep. God showed me this before I get there. So we're already in the place. God, God puts us in this place. I just want you to wait on me. I just want you to be attentive to me. Amen. Amen. Yes, he does. He does. Woo. I don't know about you. Now, I want to tell you something. It's just I'll tell you I want to have a little fun. And so... Can you imagine, just for a second, you ever had a conversation with somebody? And when they come in, they say, listen, I don't want you to say anything. All I want you to do is just be quiet, don't say nothing. You ever had one of those? 
That's not a conversation. That's just somebody telling me what to do. You know, Brother Jack, you ever get one of those? Mr. Phil ever told you, just be quiet, Jack. I'll tell you <laughs> Woo! And see, the difference about you than some of us is because she can always tell you, hit the road, Jack. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Listen. So, so here's this thing. Most of us don't want to, to listen to God, and we want God to do it our way. The father's telling him, listen, here's what I want, to, want you to do. I don't want you to go there, but you still got to wait. I'm, I'm sending you a direction. I'm sending you in a direction, but I'm not going to tell you exactly where you're going. That's our navigation system. <laughs> so we like to put in the address. Right here, put in that address. And then tell you, you, you have arrived at your destination. You look around, where the heck am I? Yeah. Yeah. This is not, yeah. Oh, well, literally the Father's saying, what I want from you, tell somebody what the Lord wants from you right now, is to be attentive to his voice, to follow him where he's going to lead you. Amen. That sound like you? And so he was already doing that. Now, it's, it's instrumental for us to understand that the same thing he's doing with Isaac he has already done with Abraham. You're looking for, tell somebody, I'm looking for something different. But there's a pattern to God. Tell somebody, the pattern is not going to change. He was the same yesterday. God wasn't just because you, you say, God, I need more info. How many of y'all telling God, I need to fold one one? <laughs> or it's going to be a 911. <laughs> God's not moved because you want more information. He's looking for you and I just to be still, to be disciplined to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Is that right? Amen. I'm going to hurry. I'm going to hurry, y'all. I just, I just want you to get this, this stuff for, you know, so you can get your blessing. And then some of you know, take your neighbor, you may not be in line for this. Nobody want to tell anybody? Christian, I'll tell you like this. You may not be in line for this. Is it coming right up to you? That make you a little upset? Well, because there's a pattern in it. You know, Pastor Thelma, now I know you're going to get yours. But, it, you know, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. There's some folks, they may not be in line for this. But if you follow this, you're going to find there's a pattern to it. What God does, literally in his pattern, because of the obedience of somebody else, you may be getting ready to get blessed. Amen. So Christian, even if you're not in line for it, because of what you're going to see, because of our connection, you're going to get blessed. Because God blessed me. That means he's blessed me to be a blessing. You want to know? Okay, leave that alone. Okay. Don't get excited, y'all. Okay, now listen. And so, what he's doing, he's setting up a pattern that we can progressively follow. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee, sojourn, sojourn in the land, and I will be with thee. Tell somebody, God said, I will be with you in the place where you're at. This mess you up because he's telling you to go somewhere but not the place that you want to go. And in this place, God says, when you go, I'm going to be with you. Okay, y'all not hearing me. I'm going to move. He says, I will be with thee and I'll do what? What am I going to do when I, if I'm with you? Somebody say what? What are you going to do? Anybody got your Bible? I told you. Bless you. Act two, he gonna bless you. <laughs> he gonna bless you for unto thee and unto thy seed. He said, "Listen." He said, "I'm gonna bless you, and I'm gonna bless your seed. Amen. I'm gonna bless you, and I'm gonna bless your seed." This is a word. Now, see if you understand this. The reason Isaac is hearing this, this is a word that was given to Abraham. Amen. Abraham's word is still going to be a fulfilled through Isaac. And he's speaking this word to him, 
reminding him what's already been spoken. I need to tell you, some of you are going to be blessed just because somebody else was faithful, not you. Somebody else was praying when you wouldn't, and they prayed you through. Somebody else stood in the gap when you didn't even want to go. They were praying when you come into the place that God's calling you to. So you got to understand this. It's the people that have already stood in place. Look like ain't nothing happened in their lives. God said, I'm blessing you even in the midst of this place where I've, I've stationed you. This place that I put you. I'm blessing you here. I'm moving in your life even though it looks like nothing is happening. I'm moving in the midst of your life and I'm preparing you. You, Man, look at this. Some of you are really the conduit for others in your family. God is using some of you where the family has seen generational curses. God is literally putting you in the gap. Because of your obedience to God, you are now causing what was generational curses to turn around and be the blessing that's supposed to be the family. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. And so you see these things as going. He's setting us up as we see Isaac, Abraham. He's showing us some things. It's also the same thing. He did the same thing with, with the Israelites. He's doing the same thing. It's like the same thing God is showing. He's showing this pattern. Man, I'm blessing my people. And as you obey, as you follow, I bless your seed because of your obedience. I bless your household because of your obedience. You, Some of you think you done made it. And I love it. I love it. I listen sometimes to different people and they believe that they just made it over. Some folks say, man, I, I just came into it. I did it all. <laughs> no. It's some folks that have been standing in the gap yeah. Yeah. and you don't even know where they've been standing. Yeah. And because of their prayers, yeah. even though you put forth your efforts, it is their prayers and their walk yeah. before God. God said, I'm causing the blessings to come. Amen. Amen. And so there is their their benefit, beneficiaries, I say, beneficiaries of what others have done, yet they really didn't do it. They think, man, it's all because of my good efforts. I see what I did? You didn't do this. If others had not gone and been praying and put in the work before God, then the due diligence of praying and walking in the places of God, you wouldn't be where you at. And so here's what he says. I will give all these countries and I will perform. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I messed it up. He says, I will be with thee and will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy and unto thy what? Seed. 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 Glory to God. Are you somebody's seed? Yes. I want to tell you something because we'll get more into that thing even about the seed because there has to be a soul. Somebody sowed a seed and that seed that sowed is now reaping the benefits. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whew. He says, I will give thee, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham, thy father. I'm doing this because I swore unto your father. It's because of your father. I spoke this word to your father. It must come. It must come through you. Amen. It's not, the, you know, even though you're walking, but the walk began before you got here. Yes. Your father was doing a work before you got here. Your father's prayers brought you in line. Help me, Holy Ghost. Some of us are missing this. Some of us are missing this. And I will make thy seed. And I will make thy seed. And I will make thy seed. And I will make thy seed to multiply. Wait a minute. The word that was given to Abraham is the word now that's coming to Isaac. This is the word that was given to I Abraham. It's now coming to Isaac. Whew. It's because, tell somebody, because of your obedience. 
you're causing somebody else to come in. Because you're moving in position, you're causing somebody else to be blessed just because you're obedient. Help me hold up. This help anybody yet? Amen. Now I gotta hurry, y'all. Wow. He says, I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abram, because you obey. Y'all reading with me? Yes. Because you obey. Because you put forth all the work. Because of your efforts. Is that what it say? No, because Abraham obeyed. Oh, glory to God. I can even tell you this. I can even tell you this. We need to understand. Jesus brings this back, this same fact back, back, back to us. He said, because of Abraham. Tell somebody you being blessed because of Abraham. Thank you, Lord. Because Abraham was obedient. God said, now, because you become, you, you get to be joint heirs with Jesus, but he's connecting us to Abraham. Oh, wow. So the blessings are coming forth. Tell somebody I'm getting ready to be blessed. Ready to be blessed. And it wasn't because of me. <laughs> you know, basically what, it, what I'm saying to you, you didn't earn this. The truth be told, you didn't earn this. That kind of kind of just throws it out of pocket. It wasn't. <coughs> you ever get mad and say, why God, you ain't done nothing for me. Why are you blessed over there? You ain't blessing me. <laughs> you ever been there? Been upset like that? Well, I want to tell you, there's some other folks that should have gotten a whole lot more than you got because they didn't been... Okay, leave that alone. Some of you haven't even been on the front, front line. You got shot at, and you think you was in the war. <laughs> Pastor, you know, we heard a firecracker. Some of them just heard a firecracker, and they think somebody's shooting at me. You ain't even been in the midst of this thing. You don't even know what it's like. But there have been people that have been in the trenches for you. Whoo, help me hold it up. Okay, that hurt, that hurt, that hurt. That hurt. Followers just show me. She says, listen, I want people to understand. I'm blessing them. It's a season and a time of bringing forth some things. And in the midst of the season, it may not look like it. Tell somebody it may not look like it. It may not look like it. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my law, laws. This is why he's blessing you. Isaac, this is why I'm blessing you. And so Isaac dwelt in the land that God is sending to. Now watch this. Somebody say, watch this. Watch this. Here's what I love about the word. The parallel. I don't really have time to mess with this one because... You'll see the same parallel. Isaac did the same thing as Abraham. With his wife. Remember his wife? Mm -hmm. remember, remember Abraham had a beautiful wife, right? Yes. And he didn't, he didn't want. You know, he figured because his wife looked so good. Come on, y'all. Y'all want. You know, people, you know, people get a little. They, you know, he didn't want anybody to take his life because they wanted to get to his wife. And so he said his wife was his sister. He started telling everybody. And that's the same thing Abraham did. So here's, here's the pattern, the father and the son. All God is really trying to show you is that as I was with him, so I was with you. Amen. So with Abraham, God spoke. God spoke to the king and told the king, and told the king, listen, that's his wife. And here's what I want you to do to make sure that nothing happens to him. But this king with Isaac, he has a different kind of heart. His heart is already in tune or turned to God. And so all he had to do was look out. And he saw that brother with his wife. When he saw him with his wife, it was the way he was kind of touching her. He knew that wasn't, that wasn't the sister. 
Pastor, the way he was kind of holding her. He knew that, you know, he, he the way he was holding her. He knew that that wasn't. <laughs> he just watched out of the hands. So he did, no, no, that ain't just. <laughs> Woo. You know, come on, let's be real, brothers. You know what I'm talking about? Kissing your sister back in the day, that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. no, they tell you, give your sister a kiss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that bad boat, fine. That give you the coots. Glory <laughs> to God. <laughs> you know, and so here it was. It was obvious that this was not his sister. But here was the thing. The man of God, or the king, in this case, the king went and said something to all the people. But you see the parallel. All God is trying to show us, what I did back then, I'm doing right now. As I blessed him, so I'm blessing him. So as I bless him, Abraham, as I bless Isaac, so I'm about to bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Whoo! Okay, okay, okay. Gotta hurry up, gotta hurry up. So I'm just trying to get that out of the way. Let's move on. Come on, come on. We gotta move on real quick. I'm trying to get somewhere. My time running out, man. Is this helping anybody? Yeah. Now here's what I want to get to, because I gotta jump, man. I gotta jump. Go to verse 12. Everybody get to verse 12. Whew. Take your neighbor and mark this one down. What does the Bible say? In verse 12. What, somebody kind of throw that back. What does it say? Verse 12. What does it say? <sighs> Man, come on. Nobody give me the baseball score. Let me know you're reading your Bible. <clears throat> then Isaac what? Sold in that land. Then Isaac did what? Sold in that land. Well, now listen. Listen. This is the place where God told him to go. I want you to sojourn or go. Can I say, go stay in that land. I want you to go live in that land. And the place that I'm sending you to, he said, the place where I'm sending you to, I want you to sow into it. But what does this mean, to sow into it? Whew. Tell somebody, this is where he's going to talk about sowing seed. He said, this is the land I'm going, I want you to sow seed into. Now I'm going to tell you something. It's going to go some, show me some things. See, there's a whole lot of controversy going on about tithes. And should you tithe, you shouldn't tithe. I'm going to tell you like this. If you don't get nothing else, you better understand about sowing. There's some things that you need to understand about sowing and reaping. It's, it's scriptural. It ain't going to change. It's not going to change. It's going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I'm not going to talk about tithing. I'm just going to talk about sowing and reaping. So what, what he told Isaac, he told Isaac, I want you to sow into that land. Now for us, it's like this. Let me tell you like this. You ever go to a church? You ever hear a word that blesses you? Yes. That's a place that you're receiving something from, but you need to sow into it. Amen. 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 And I want to tell you something. And this is my message, my brother Jack. As God was saying, he says, uh, many of my people don't understand the reason why they're reaping certain things in their lives. So she tell me, some of the things that we're reaping is because of our mouths. Some of us, some of us have sown unforgiveness. That was what we sowed into the land. We sowed unforgiveness. We heard so disrespect. We so hurt. We so hey, y'all what I'm saying? Yes. We sowed some things into places, and God said, "You're getting ready to reap a harvest from what you sow." Oh God! Oh God! I this is sad because I'm gonna tell you something. The Lord showed me and said, "So many of our leaders, so many of our leaders have stood with people as they've gone through different places." And the leader may have made, made a mistake similar to what you made. That's right. But what we did is we brought judgment upon the leader. Right. We didn't sow forgiveness. He says, so get ready because you wouldn't sow grace. You get ready to get judgment. 
many of you get ready to get judgment because you sowed unforgiveness and no grace. It's the land that you've been sowing into. You say, well, get back, get back, get back, because you don't took us too far. I'm not trying to scare you. I just want you to understand. Some of y'all mad. Some folks won't sow into. They won't sow into the things that God called them to. Now, can I tell you what? Man, there's some places that are prosperous because people sow into them. <sighs> McDonald's, the line is full. Arby's, Jack in the Box, Red Lobster, Olive Garden, call it FC. You, you, these places, we've been sowing into them. We reap something from them, but we've been sowing into them. God said, now, and, and hopefully, when you go in there, when you sow into it, you get something good, right? Yeah, that's why you keep going back. <laughs> but we have failed to sow into the places that God is calling us to. Amen. So what happens, what happens for us is that we have not understand there's a law that when you sow, you're going to reap. Right. Right. Somebody say you're going to reap what you sow. <clears throat> everybody don't have money. I'm not, I'm, not, <clears throat> I'm not saying you don't pass away. Everybody, God's not calling everybody to sow money. Sometimes he just wants you to sow your time. Amen. 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 But don't let that be an excuse for you not to give. Amen. There are things that God is calling for that we refuse to sow. He said, but you want, to, you want to reap. Tell somebody, I want to reap. And I come to the place, man, I'm going to tell you, my time is so valuable. Amen. I don't, I don't want to waste my time. You know, Amen. I don't want to waste my time for people or with people. Amen. Because there's things that God has placed. Somebody say, God put on deposit. God put on deposit. God put some things on deposit that I'm supposed to show into. Amen. So, so we call it like this. Tell somebody what you, you invest in. You, you invest in anything? Amen. When you invest in something, you're looking for a return on your investment. Amen. Amen. Woo, help me hold on. Stephanie went to, to Berkeley. Glory to God. I won't tell you. When we, you know, I only went to Berkeley two times. No, three times. Glory to God. I took her up. I think, you know, for orientation. I went to orientation and I went when we went to drop her off. And then when it was time to pick her up. Piscay! Only she know what that means. Glory to <laughs> God. Well, you know, when I, I let her know that when I went to pick her up at Berkeley, I said, now baby, but listen. Now, we invested. She'd be like, what'd you invest? I sent you as a seed into Berkeley to get educated. <laughs> so that you can do something with that education to better yourself and to bless me. I want a return on my investment. I was praying while you was in Berkeley. In fact, Brother Darrell, every day, self to tell you without fail, I would call her every morning. Stephanie's alarm clock was set to go off at 7.30. I called her religiously between 7.29. 7.27 and 7.29. I called her religiously each day. <laughs> and she would say to me, why? <laughs> I wanted to remind her of my investment. Now, as we sow, as we invest, there should be a return on our investments. See, see now, now, now this makes no sense to you, but when you see culturally in the Old Testament, you'll see it is important when these people had children because what's happening on people. I'll tell you, I'll put it up there. The children, the children were the parents' investment. The children were their future. And so many cultures today, what they look for in their children, see, we don't understand this. We don't follow this because we, we, we put our, our, our parents, 
You know, our culture, we have a tendency to just put people out to pasture. We send them to places and tell them that's where they go. These people invested in their children in the beginning so that later on in life, their children were supposed to take care of them. There should be. Am I talking tonight? Y'all got quiet on me. Y'all got to make y'all mad? Okay, because I'm, I'm invested in you. I want to return on my investment. <laughs> see, see, this is one of the things why many of the ministries haven't moved is because we've been investing in the ministry of people, but the people didn't invest in us. Wow, wow, wow. Many of our leaders have grown tired and weary because they kept investing in people that would not invest in them. So what they were doing, they were sowing, but they weren't reaping. So many leaders got tired because they were sowing, giving out, giving out, giving out, nothing coming back. You know what it's like even to give somebody a good word all the time? You encouraging people. But you may be down, but nobody encourages you. And I understand, like David, sometimes we just got to encourage ourselves in the Lord. But there is also another part. Am I in the right house? Okay, I got to hurry because it's. Okay, because the sowing. And I really could take a little bit of time to really get into it. But do you understand the sense of sowing? Yes. When you sow, when you sow your seed, let me tell you okay, like this. Even to the point you got to speak to the seed that you're going to sow. You got to help the seed understand what I want it to do. Man, you know, it's funny. Because I said the world has more of an idea of sowing and reaping. The world has more of an idea about speaking to things than we do. God gave us to call things in line and in order by the word. And I just thought it was funny. Uh, brother, you know, Brother Darrell, have you ever seen somebody when they shoot and dice? Say, baby, got you a <laughs> Speaking over the old dice. Oh, That's crazy. But they call it in something when they throw it out. You watch people. You know, I, I don't know why it is. Like with dominoes, man, I'm, I'm like, I don't understand why. Give me five! <laughs> you know, I got to bang the table. And, and, and I'm the guy that says, hey, listen, why don't y'all put something under there? <laughs> and they don't want to play if it goes like this. They don't want to play. They want to, you got to smack it down. <laughs> and I got to make sure. Give me 10. I got 15. Domino, domino. <laughs> but they speak that thing out. We in the body of Christ, we don't even speak to the things that God has given us to speak to. Yes. We don't call things in a line or call it in the order. But God called us. He said the earth, how to say the world was framed by his word. Amen. God literally is calling you and I to speak. So that's the sow, that's the seed. When we sow the seed, there's a return investment that's coming our way. Amen. Yes. Thank you. We neglected to do this. Ooh. Okay, am I helping anybody? Yes. Ooh, this is taking a little longer than I thought. I mean, I, I may have to leave something out, but um, let's get here. Let's get here. Let's get here. And all right, verse 12. Then Isaac sold in that land. And the reason why it's important you say that land, this is the place where God planted him. This is the place where God sent him. Many of us have been running to and from the other places. Find the place that God has sent you to and sow into the land. Amen. Now, wait a minute. But well, watch what happened. Then Isaac sowed in what land? And he received the same year. Somebody say in the same year. Same year. Somebody say in the same year. Same year. In the same year he sowed. He reaped, what did the Bible say? A hundredfold. A tenfold return. A hundredfold. Roland, you see this? He received a twentyfold return. A hundredfold. Roland's shaking his head. Christian, 
He received a 30-fold return. She, she, she trying to... Nobody... So she met a, he received a 40... A hundredfold. A hundredfold. A hundredfold. Well, they don't just go correct me. They just go correct me, brother Jeff. They just go correct me. Like they, like they really knew this. Here's the thing that's amazing about this. He says he gets a hundredfold return. Why are you getting a hundredfold return? Because he's selling. And he's getting a hundredfold return. This is bigger than what you y'all don't even get the y'all don't even get the gist of what's really happening. But what's happening. What's happening is whatever Isaac is sowing into the land, whatever Isaac is sowing into the land, God's called him to duplicate, replicate, multiply, additional. He's causing it to come so rapidly, it's more so the growth he is seeing. Somebody says he's seeing increase. He's seeing increase. Everywhere he turns, he's seeing increase. Everywhere he looks, he's seeing increase. Everything he does that he invest in, there's an increase that comes back to him. Amen. Yes. Yes. And in truth, when you really understand what God says, he says this is just this is just from him sowing. Now we understand God is blessing, but this is not the blessing. Tell somebody this is not even the blessing. <laughs> this is just in other words, what's happening here, he says as he sows, he says I'm causing the increase. As he sow I'm speaking increase. As he sow, I'm causing that thing that he sows into to increase, Thank to you. multiply, Thank to be added to every time he sows. Man. That would just make me want to give. That's not like if, if every time I gave, I saw something increase. So wait a minute. Father, I heard you say give, not five dollars. You, you ever been in that place? You know, you you come on, be real with y'all for a second. He, you ever, don't nobody get mad at me. You know, uh, but what we'll do is we already think about what we're gonna do when we get out. You might do that, or do you wait till the ministry of the parking lot before we discuss <laughs> what we're gonna go eat? You, no. Ministry of parking, you know, people who want to get out of church, but they get to the ministry of the parking lot, they can stand there for 20, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, just talking about what they did yesterday. Then they get into the, you know, the different things about today, where we're going to eat. So here's what happened. Because I know the ministry of the parking lot, <laughs> Pastor Wayne, I know already we're going to Red Lobster. <laughs> so red lobster is going to cost me and my, my, my spouse is going to cost us about you know 50 bucks unless I can get her to get from the, the you know <laughs> well, I know they didn't have the price it's okay Ooh. You know, it, it's kind of like, you know, y'all up in the Alphabies, right? You see the Alphabies, they got that little thing where they get, you know, that tooth. You know, you make everybody get these. You get that cut, that little crop. You know. but, but now, I just want you to understand. When we get into the ministry of the parking lot, we already done set aside. Brother Jack, you know what I'm talking about. You know, so so you be like my dad. You probably got that big money. You just hide some of it. And so, so what you do... As you already know, I got a hundred dollars to spend over here. We're going to Benny Honey. So we got a hundred dollars. But the church, I'm gonna set aside five for them. Uh oh, man. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. See, this one's oh, did I, I did this? I don't I'm not supposed to mess with this like this, but, but, but it's like if we don't get it now, you get it served, you get it served whether you like it or not. Because it's, it's preparation for the blessing. And at this Amen. time, in this time, God is really calling him. He says, it's time for you to sow into, invest into the things, because I'm getting ready to bless you, but you have to be obedient to get blessed. You see, real life people use some good food. Olive Garden don't taste good. 
But then that's going to be over. Help me, Holy Ghost. But what God can do with many of us, as you're obedient to sow, He said, I'm going to cause the increase. Amen. So, everybody, everywhere you turn. Yes, Lord. Everywhere you turn. Everywhere you turn. Everywhere you turn. Now, I've got to hurry up because there's something else I want you to see. Everywhere you turn, He says, I'm going to cause the increase. This is what I'm talking about. This is hundredfold. It's like, every, but that's not the blessing. Because he's blessing, this makes me mad, Pastor. But what's happening is that God is literally saying, He says, This is really, tell somebody, this is really, this is really about sowing the seed. This is really not even the harvest. Woo -hoo. But of course, this is really not the harvest. This is just sowing the seed. Even though you see him reap it, he reaped somebody say he reaped a hundredfold. But what God was really requiring him for, if you understand what's happening, he's seeing increase. As he's sowing, as he's sowing, he's seeing increase. It's about the seed. Keep sowing, you're going to see the increase. Amen. Keep sowing, you see, okay. Amen. 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 So everywhere he's looking, Pastor, he's seeing increase because he's sowing into the land, that land that God sent him into. Amen. Tell somebody that place. That, that place. place. That place. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. And he said, I call that place. Thank you, Lord. What are you saying? We know it's the Lord, but when that word is first mentioned, <coughs> when that word is first mentioned, it's Abram he's talking to. There's a pattern. He said, Abram to go and to sow. The seed he was going to sow was that son. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And because of his obedience, God stopped him at the point in which he was, he had already thrust it down in his heart, in his mind. He had already thrust it down. But he knew God was going to resurrect him some kind of way if he did what he was calling to do. But here's the thing. Because he is sowing, God said, Stop. Can I just paraphrase? Just stop. He said, I got a ram in a bush. He says, Jehovah Jireh. And he called that place Jehovah Jireh. The, that the Lord will provide. Y'all don't get this. Yes. So you got to understand the place that God's telling you to sow, he can recall that to be the place where Jehovah Jireh. And so we're, we're called in the balance because things are not happening, but you won't do part of the things God's called. Man, I'm, you can't just tell your neighbor, you don't get to sow where you want to sow. God's calling you to sow in specific places. So you got to know. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. All right now. Okay, okay. This is just preparation for your blessing. This is the preparation for the increase. So you got to know. There's things that we've already agreed as a church. Let's sow into them. Because God says sow into them. Amen. The minute we hear it, sow into them. Amen. There's an increase coming because of our obedience. Amen. We're going to be blessed because of the obedience of God. Amen. He's going to cause an Amen. addition, a multiplication. Yes. Come on, y'all. Because we're sowing. Yes. So we get ready to see the increase. Many of you have to prepare for the increase. So you've got to start sowing into yes. it. All right, yes. all right. All right. Let me hurry. Let me hurry. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Now we can say God was blessing him. Different translations. So God was blessing him. It was continual. It's perpetual. It is meant to be that as you sow, what's really supposed to happen? Whew, what's really supposed to happen? Then we want to get to the place that if we're obedient to sow, what's going to happen is a perpetual blessing. Because what's happening is I've sowed so much, even as I'm sowing, I'm reaping. There's a harvest, and I'm sowing. There's a harvest, and I'm sowing. And every time I'm sowing, I'm reaping because I've been sowing. 
question does make sense to anybody from these people. I, at least somebody say amen. 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 Say amen, Ken. I'm going I'm to follow. I agree. I agree. I agree. So even as you sow, even as you sow, Sister Tammy, he says what happens. See, here's the thing that gets you, gets you messed up. God's not concerned about the mouth. He's concerned about the heart. Amen. God's concerned about obedience. Amen. God's looking at individuals that will do what he's calling them to do. Yes, Lord. Yes. What he was looking for from Isaac, that Isaac would do the follow through. Tell somebody you're not following through. You can't expect nothing to come your way. Amen. Come on. Come on. So here it was. The sowing, the sowing, the action of sowing. See, I tell some people, the reason I'm telling them, they think, man, he trying to get my, my pocketbook. I don't want to money. God had to tell me. I was at a place, and the Holy Ghost said, I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get something to you. Amen. Brother Jack, that's what changed me. You know, I was a giver, but I'd be sometimes worried about the parking lot ministry. <laughs> and Holy Ghost said, listen. He said, listen, I'm not trying to take from you. I'm trying to take, put something into you. Amen. And so the way you're going to get it is by sowing. He says, as you show, and man, I got it so so bad. I had got it it's so bad. Me and this other brother, we caught it so well. We go to lunch. And we be fighting over the bill. <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I go and ask him, how much is it? Because I'm going to pay. Because I know, let me bless you because I'm going to get blessed. <laughs> I'm going right. to sow. That's right. Because as I sow, I can anticipate a reap. To be reaping right. is. Come on, come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Someone say, you just. See, that's why we don't talk about money in the church because folks don't want to hear this stuff. You just, they just trying to get out money. They must need to build something. <laughs> Try stomach. They want something. They want another chair. I'm trying to help. Amen. Now, now, I know the enemy was trying to keep me at home today. Glory to God. That's why he, and, and especially when that arm would, wouldn't come up. Right? <laughs> How are you going to tell people I couldn't come to church because I couldn't break the idol arm and have to pay? And I couldn't back up. Woo! You late because you wanted to get the car washed when the father said, don't go there. He said, go sow in. He said, I want you to go sow into the land. Okay. And so Isaac is seeing something happen. And really, if you understand what's happening is that every time he's sowing, it's the seed. It's about the seed action. Because every time he's reaping something, he's sowing something. Tell somebody get ready. Be ready. Be ready. Now I gotta show you this, because I gotta hurry up. Because my time just about going to minutes, and then he said, Man, that's a long message. He was talking a long time. No, I gotta eat. <laughs> Amen, sir. Come on now. Come on. I, I, I need you to see something real quick. I gotta, gotta do this real quick. Uh, now, at the same point, and which God is moving. And this is what, what because I was asking God, I said, how are you blessing us when we're seeing all these things happen? Somebody say, Henny Penny. Pastor, <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, why the church is still running like this. <laughs> you know, and I'm not, saying, I'm not saying don't do your due diligence, the things that you're supposed to do. But we can't keep running like we're scared of everything. Oh, Amen. 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 Somebody better speak speak a word of the Lord. And you know, better yet, you may be called to pray for somebody that already got the Paul. <laughs> we we done been to hospital rooms and I know I know the people that we done went to pray for. We went to pray for people that already had uh what's that uh, uh the, the Minnesota virus. Whatever you call it. They, they had the virus. We still had to pray for them. Like now, now you can mask up. <laughs> Put your other thing on if necessary. You can do all those things, but you can still. I'm going to speak the word of the Lord over you. That's right. And I believe God. You know, it's hard sometimes. It's hard sometimes for us to say that we trust God and we believe God. 
people looking at us and where we're running. I had to tell a guy, though, you know, because I, I, some things I just don't like, Pastor. Now, they didn't said for him to mask up. He came on, he got sweat pouring off of him, no shirt on. He come up, sometimes I want five, you know, want some money. Stay back. <laughs> I won't eat six feet. <laughs> now, I won't want six feet regardless. I don't want everybody in my space. I don't care if you're well dressed or not. I don't want everybody up on me. Is that all right, Brother Jack? I'm real. I'm real. Glory to God. I go to basketball, football game. I still say, back up. You can get excited about your team, but you don't have to get over my space. <laughs> we can all do the way. You just don't fall back. Yeah, anyway. So, you know, some things I understand. Okay, y'all think I'm crazy. It's some things I'm understanding. But we as a body of believers, the God that we serve is bigger than all these things. Amen. 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 I'm not telling you don't do certain, don't you go in them places when they say, put that mask on, you tell them, I ain't wearing no mask because my God will. No, you do, you got to still obey, you know, yeah. things like, you got to do the right yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you be causing no more problem. God, yeah. you're not going on. Anyway, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry if that upset you, if that offended you, I do apologize, but just. But I want you to see something. The reason I'm bringing this up it's because the next thing that's happening, remember God has blessed him because he was sowing. There's, in his sowing of the seed, you see a hundredfold return, but it's really in the sense of the sowing. The sowing is bringing forth the reaping. But then God says, if you understand what takes place, is that it's after this. And, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. God just kept calling him to just... Just increase, 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 increase. He's increasing because of obedience to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Obedience to what God has called for is calling him in. I, I'm, reading, I'm telling you, tell somebody we must prepare for the increase. We must prepare for the increase. He had possession of flocks, possession of herds, and great store of servants. And the Philistines envy him. And you know what that, really, that word really is when he says envy him? This is part of the word blessed. When you're blessed, people are going to envy you. Yes, they are. Because they're wondering, how is it that you're so blessed? And it's because they won't sell. I, want to, I need you to see this because i gotta get, I got to hurry up. i, I got to hurry up. What's taking place next? Remember, there's parallel, 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 parallel. And what's taking place, the reason I started talking about the things that are happening in the world, it may make you uneasy, but what happens is that God is blessing in the midst of the things that are happening. Thank you. Thank you. The people are envy and they're upset with him because he's blessed. He's blessed so much, he's been enlarged to the point that it's like his stuff taking over their stuff. They're scared of him. I'm scared of you. I'm scared of you. But, but what's happening, he's so blessed, and they're seeing this increase that's so rapid. This is rapid increase. This is miraculous increase. This is stuff that's happening that couldn't happen unless God was in it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on. Wow. They got jealous. So he had to, you know, with the herds and the people, you need water. That's a real commodity. I think in a few more months, we're going to find this out. Much of a commodity it is. And it's a commodity, if you will, that the people really need. Am I that's it right? Amen. And so he starts to dig wells. Actually, he started to dig the wells that his father had that they had 
covered over. Yes. Now, now stop for a moment. Somebody say put this on pause. Put this on pause. Why would you cover up a well where this is the place where you get good water from and you in the desert? Why would you cover up a well that's bringing forth water in the desert? Because they were mad with the Father because God was blessing him they were mad with Abraham because they were blessing him and they wanted to stop him from being blessed. <laughs> so they started stopping up his wells because he's taking up a, we don't have enough water because you getting all the water. We don't have enough resources. It wasn't so, but because he's being blessed, they want to stop the blessing. Can I tell you right now, there are things that are going on where the enemy seems like he's trying to stop your blessing. And the Father should let you know this. That in the midst of this, just like you see the parallel here. He says, even in the midst of all that's going on. In the midst of the economy, I'm going to bless my people. That's how I my wells, if you want to call it, are being covered over, being blocked up. I don't care about, about theories that others have, how it's happening. I just want you to know that even if the enemy is behind the thing that's trying to keep you from getting your thing, God said, I'm going to cause you to be blessed. If you're obedient to my word, I'm going to bless you. In the oh, wow, wow. Listen, listen, I didn't mean to take this much time, so I'm going I'm to stop right here. Glory to God. Just help anybody but me. Oh, my God, my God. For those of you who are listening to us via Facebook, we want to thank God for you being a part of us this morning. I pray that the word is a blessing to you. I pray that you hear something that you understand. And I pray that this word blesses you, that you sow into this place. Agape Community Fellowship, sow into this place. Bless the people of God that are blessing you with the word. Bless them that God will bless you even more. Amen. 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 So we praise God for you. And then I want to tell you, the word works if you will work the word.